Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are still in chapter 1 matter and now we're going to focus on the subtopic of 1.3, stoichiometry part 3 of the video. So in this video, we're going to look into the definition of the limiting gradient as well as the percentage yield. Also, we're going to perform a stoichiometry calculation using the mole concept and also include the term of limiting gradient as well as the percentage yield. So, the learning objective of C and D here will be covered in part 3 of the video, which is in this video. For the learning objective of A and D, it has been covered in part 1 and part 2, respectively, which is in the previous video. So without any further ado, let us start with part 3 of the video first. So what is stoichiometry? Stoichiometry is a quantitative study of a reactant and product in a chemical reaction. So here we are talking about one PT, or in simpler way, we can say that it, we are talking about a ratio. So example here, we have one mole of one mole of calcium carbonate reacting with two mole of hydrochloric acid in order to produce one mole of CaCl2 and one mole of carbon dioxide and one mole of water. So stoichiometry can be used in order to calculate the quantity of a species that we are interested during a reaction. To understand more about this, let us look into the example. So, chemical equation. So, how many moles of the hydrochloric acid, KCl, do we need to react with 0.5 mole of zinc? So, you know that this is a given equation, and from this equation, you know that we have 1 mole of zinc and 2 mole of KCl. So, we are interested in the uh, HCl. Okay, so we can say that from the equation, one mole of zinc will react with two mole of HCl. However, when we have 0.5 mole of zinc, it's going to react with x mole of HCl. So the x here can be obtained through a cross multiplication, similar to the one that you have learned in previous slide, in the previous video. So from here, you know that x is equal to 0 0.5 times 2. What, so what you're going to get is 1 mole of HCl. Okay, and I said before, it's almost like ratio. So here is 1 to 2. If we have 0 0.5, automatically we know that it is equal to 1. Okay, let us look into another example, which is example number 2. How many mole of H2O will be formed when 0.25 mole of C2H5OH burns in oxygen. So this is the equation. So we are interested in the water part here. So you can use um, the comparison using stoichiometry, where from the equation, you know that one mole of C2H5OH, which is an ethanol, will produce three mole of water. If we have 0.25 mole of C2H5OH, then we're going to produce x mol of H2O. So the same thing, we can do a cross multiplication. So you know that x is equal to 0 0.25 multiplied by 3, and then we're going to get 0 0.75 mol of H2O. So this is how we're going to find the mole of water. Similarly, it looks like a ratio 1 to 3, right? So you know that if we have 0 0.25, so it needs to be multiplied by 3 in order to get the same ratio of 1 to 3. Okay? Now, we're going to move on to the next term, terma yang baru, which is the limiting reactant. So what is a limiting reactant? Limiting reactant is a reactant that is completely consumed in a reaction and limits the amount of the product form. Meanwhile, an excess reactant is a reactant that is not completely consumed, and there are going to be some remaining at the end of the reaction. As what you can see here, the reactant A is going to react with a reactant B in order to produce a product AB and AB. So from these two reactants here, we know that the B here is a limiting reactant because B is completely consumed in order to form product. Meanwhile, for the uh, A's here, you know that two of the A's are going to be consumed and three A going to be balanced here. Okay, we can put as A 
AA. So the A here refers to the excess reactant because only two of them has been used up and they're going to be in excess. So in real life, you can imagine it to be like you are cooking a sausage burger. So let's say you have five sausage, one, two, three, four, five, and you have four sets of buns. So one bun and one sausage can be can be connected together in order to form a burger here. Okay, so we have four of those, and this is going to be making a product. But you have excess reactant. So you know that the excess reactant is going to be remaining at the end. So this one is going to be an excess, and the set of bun here is going to be the limiting reactant. Okay, and this it is very important for us to know which is the limiting reactant because the limiting reactant is going to limit the amount of the product form. Maksudnya, jika kita ada empat kita hanya boleh menghasilkan empat and this is important in the chemical reaction because once this one is finished no more product can be formed okay now let us look into the example so let's say if we have four mole of sulfur react with 10 mole of fluorine which of the re which of the two reactant is a limiting reactant is the limiting reactant sulfur or is the limiting reactant fluorine so how going, how are we going to, going to determine that? So in order to do that, we need to look at the equation. So similarly, we can similarly like before, one mole of sulfur gonna react with three mole of fluorine. If we have four mole of sulfur, then we're gonna react with x mole of F2. So the similar thing again, so we're gonna do a cross multiplication, and we know that x is equal to 12 mole of fluorine. So the 12 mole of fluorine here is the one that is needed in the reaction. Okay, so secara logiknya, if we have 4 mol of sulfur, we need 12 mol of F2. However, from the equation, it says it's stated that we have the number of mol of F2 only 10 mol. So you can say that the number of F2 available, apa yang kita ada, lebih sedikit dari apa yang kita perlukan. The number of mole of F2 available is lesser than the number of mole of F2 needed. So you can say that the F2 is the limiting reactant. Now we're going to look into example number two, which relates more to the chemistry question. So you have 10 gram of zinc is added to a beaker containing 0.18 mole of hydrochloric acid to form zinc chloride and hydrogen gas determine the limiting reactant and the mass in gram for the hydrogen gas produced. So for this question, um, you need to be able to construct a chemical equation first in order to answer the question because the equation is not given. So you need to read the question again where you say that zinc, which is 10 gram, is added into a beaker containing 0 0.8 moles of HCl. So the reaction of zinc in HCl gonna produce to form zinc chloride, which is zinc Cl2, and hydrogen gas. Okay, so zinc chloride here is obtained from zinc 2 plus with Cl minus. So when you cross over the charge, you're gonna get zinc Cl2. So it is important for you to write back, which is zinc solid plus HCl equals, and this is going to produce zinc chloride equals, or you can put a solid when it's disposited, and then you're going to release hydrogen gas. Okay. So this is the equation and you need to make sure that it is balanced. So zinc and zinc, Cl you're going to have 2, hydrogen you're going to have 2. So you need to put 2 here in order to balance the chemical equation. So you know that your equation is going to be zinc solid plus 2 HCl aqueous in order to produce zinc chloride solid plus hydrogen gas.
So this is important and you need to get the equation right. Okay, and now in order to determine the limiting reactant, you need to look at the number of mole of the of each reactant that you have. So we need to calculate the number of mole of zinc first, where the mass can be divided with its molar mass. So the number of mole of zinc that we have is 0 0.1529 mole. Meanwhile, the number of mole of HCl is already given, which is 0 0.18 mole. So what we're going to do now is we need to use stoichiometry in order to determine the limiting reactant. So you can say that from the equation, one mole of zinc, one mole of zinc gonna react with two mole of HCl. If we have 0 0.1529 mole of zinc, then we're gonna react with x mole of HCl. So we're gonna find out x. So the same thing, we're gonna do the cross multiplication. So x here, we're gonna get 0 0.3058 mole of HCl. So from here, this is the number of mole of HCl that we need. Okay. So, kalau kita ada 0 0.1529 mole of zinc, kita memerlukan 0 0.3058. However, the number of HCl that we have, which is available, is only 0 0.18. So, we can say that the number of mole of HCl available is less than the number of mole that we need. Apa yang kita ada lebih kurang daripada apa yang kita perlukan. So, therefore, we can say that the... HCl is the limiting reactant. So, this conclusion here is very, very important. And from now on, we're going to focus on the number of mole of HCl because the number of mole of HCl, which is here, plays an important role in order to determine the amount of product. So, we're going to look into the next part, which is question B. So, this is the equation here. And we need to determine the mass in gram for the hydrogen gas produced. So since we know that the HCl is the limiting reactant from question A just now, so we're going to use this in order to compare with the hydrogen gas. So from the equation, we can say that 2 mole of HCl is going to produce 1 mole of H2. So the number of mole of HCl that is available is 0 0.18 mole. So this is going to produce X mole of H2. So similarly as before, we're going to do a cross multiplication and the x here we're going to get as 0 0.09 mole. And by, by getting the 0 0.09 mole of H2, we can use that in order to calculate the mass of the hydrogen gas produced. So the mass of the hydrogen gas produced is equal to mole times molar mass. So the mole here is going to be 0 0.09 mole and the molar mass is going to be 2 times 1. So you're going to be 2 gram per mole. So per mole and mole can be cancelled out. And lastly, we're going to get the mass to be 0 0.18 gram. Okay, and this is how you're going to use the limiting reactant in order to determine the mass of the hydrogen gas that is being produced. Now we're going to move on to the next term, terma yang baru, which is the percentage yield. So what is a percentage yield? Percentage yield is basically the ratio of the actual yield, which is obtained from the experiment, divided with the theoretical yield, which is obtained from the stoichiometric calculation. And when we are talking about percentage, we need to multiply it by 100%. So the formula is given as here. Okay, so you can imagine the same situation as cooking a burger just now. So in theory, when you have your reactant, which is here and your limiting reactant and then your excess reactant here so you're gonna get four burgers so in theory your theoretical yield gonna be four okay so secara teorinya kamu akan dapat empat however during the experiment there might be something happen for example when you are cooking your burger suddenly one of your bun fall out, terjatuh atas lantai, and it cannot be eaten. So, once you lost your limiting reactant, so the burger that you can produce is only 3 out of 4. 
So you can find the percentage yield to be 75%. So it's a comparison between a theory, theoretical yield, secara teorinya kita dapat berapa, and in actual yield, how much you that, does you actually get? Okay. So sebagai contoh yang lain, during an exam, you might target secara teorinya you can get 100%. But then, actually, it might be lesser than that. It might be 92 out of 100. Okay. So to learn more uh, about this and let us look into the example in chemistry. So, in exper in an experiment, 14. 0.6 gram of SBF3 was allowed to react in excess CCL4. So the keyword here is very, very important. This one is in excess. So you automatically know that when this one is in excess, this one going to be the limiting reactant. Okay? And at 8.62 gram of CCL2F2 was obtained in at the end of the experiment. So this is the yield which is 8.62 gram was obtained in the experiment. So you know that this is the actual yield. So in question A, we need to determine the theoretical yield for the CCL2F2 in grams. So in order to find the, the theoretical yield, we need to calculate the number of mole of the limiting reactant first. So the number of mole of SBF3 is equal to mass divided by the molar mass. Okay, so SB here refers to, SB here is antimony. So SB here is having a molar mass of 1.2, 1.8 plus 3 times 19. Okay, please refer to this box here. And then you're going to get the 178.8. So once you calculate the moles, you're going to get 0 0.0817 mole. So from here, you can use a comparison or the stoichiometry where from the equation, 2 mole of SBF3 is going to produce 3 mole of CCL2F2. So if you have 0 0.0817 mole of SBF3, then you're going to produce X mole of CCL2F2 of CCL2F2. So we need to find X. So similarly as before, you need to do a cross multiplication. So you know that 2X is equal to 3 times 0 0.0817 and hence your X here is going to be 0.1226 mole of CCL2F2. So when you have the number of mole, you can now find the mass of the CCL2F2 produce where it is equal to mole times the molar mass. So the molar mass here is 1 to 1 gram per mole. So please calculate that by yourself and double check. Okay, so mole multiplied by its molar mass, mole and per mole can be cancelled out. Hence, you're going to get 14.83 gram. And this uh, mass of the CCL2F2 produce is obtained from the stoichiometry. And hence, it is a theoretical yield. So secara teorinya, you can get only 14.83. Now we're going to move on to question B. What is the percentage yield of CCL2F2? So in order to, to get the percentage yield, uh, we need to compare the actual yield, which is 8.62, with the theoretical yield, which is 14.83. This is obtained from the stoichiometry. So the percentage yield is equal to actual yield, which is 8.62, divided by the theoretical yield, which is 14.83 times 100%. So once you do the maths here, you're going to get 58.13%. Okay, and this is how you're going to do the percentage yield. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!